Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving a cubic equation as shown. At this point you can go ahead and pause the video and try the problem yourself first. Alright, let's get started. So we do have a cubic equation here which we're trying to solve. And let me tell you, first of all, we're not looking for any integer solutions because they don't exist. And the presence of one third is actually pretty interesting as a constant there. So. We're not going to use the formula here. We're just going to try to solve this problem in an interesting way. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about the solution. First of all, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get rid of the one third because that kind of bothers me. Doesn't it bother you too? So what we're going to do is we're actually going to multiply both sides by three. And you can always do that since the right hand side is equal to zero. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to go ahead and multiply both sides by three. And that should take care of the fraction. And now from here, we're going to be getting, after we distribute the 3 over, we'll get 3x cubed plus 3x squared plus 3x plus 1 being equal to 0. Now, what good does it do to multiply? I mean, we still have a cubic, right? But at least we don't have fractions. So, now, what should be uh, an alarm for you here? Well, the presence of, I would say, as soon as you see the presence of 3x squared plus 3x plus 1, that should ring the bell. If it didn't, watch the rest of the video to find out how this goes. Okay? All right. So, the presence of 3x squared plus 3x plus 1 actually reminds us something, which we should be familiar with. And that is x plus 1 cubed. Let me go ahead and write it down here on the side. If you expand x plus 1 cubed using the binomial formula, and as you know from Pascal's triangle, we get the coefficients 1, 3, 3, 1. So that's why I said this should ring the bell because you see the coefficients 3, 3, and 1 here, right? 3, 3, and 1 are present. The only thing we're missing is the first part, which we're going to take care of. Okay, so let's go on and expand this. x plus 1 quantity cubed is equal to x cubed plus 3x squared plus 3x plus 1, right? Well, we have this part. We don't have the whole thing, but we can definitely take care of that. How? Well, first of all, this is what we can do. We can actually, since this is like a special kind of exp expression, we can go ahead and isolate that. You know, you don't have to isolate a single, you know, term in an expression. You can isolate anything, basically. So I choose to isolate 3x squared plus 3x plus 1. And that's going to equal negative 3x cubed, as you know. So basically, I'm subtracting 3x cubed from both sides. Okay? Now, I want my expression. Wouldn't that be nice if my expression looked like that? Well, we can take care of that. All we have to do is add x cubed to both sides. And that can be done, right? So let's go ahead and do that. So I can go ahead and add x cubed to both sides, right? As shown here, I'm going to be putting x cubed here and x cubed here and then just proceed with the rest of the problem and the rest of the problem is 3x squared plus 3x plus 1 and then here we have the negative 3x cubed or you could just write it as minus okay so this is true because i added the same quantity to both sides so on and so forth okay but what happens after this is the left hand side is actually a good thing right this becomes x plus 1 quantity cubed, which is what we were trying to achieve, as you see here. And then the right-hand side can also be taken care of because x cubed and negative 3x cubed are like terms, so we can go ahead and combine them, and that gives us negative 2x cubed, right? Okay, awesome. Now, at this point, you might be asking, like, okay, fine, but how do we solve this problem, right? Well, we're going to be solving this problem by taking cube roots which is fairly simple right i mean we're just going to take the cube roots of both sides that's all we're going to do okay so let's go ahead and do that we're going to be taking the cube root of both sides so i'm going to go ahead and switch colors here cube root of this equals the cube root of that okay now you might be asking can i cube root a negative quantity first of all we don't know if it's a negative quantity second of all we can it's possible, it's real, it's actually real, okay? 
So you can do that. You can take the square root of a negative number, which, which won't be real, but you can do with the cube root. Okay, so let's proceed from here. Basically, what we're going to do is just simplify this. The cube root of x plus 1 cubed is equal to x plus 1. Now, how do you cube root negative 2 x cubed? Negative 2 is kind of like a weird number. It's not a perfect cube, right? I mean, it's not like 8 or 27, but that's okay. At least we have this rule for radicals. We can separate them, right? We can just write it as the cube root of negative 2 multiplied by the cube root of x cubed, which I could write as x, by the way, but I didn't. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that in the next step. And one of the things you can do here is the cube root of a negative number, right? Think about it, like cube root of negative 8 is negative 2, right? The cube root of negative 8 is negative 2, but 2 is the cube root of 8, so I can actually write this as the negative of cube root of 8. So if you have a negative sign inside the cube root, you can actually take that out. It's kind of like writing this as the cube root of negative 1 times 2. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. It's going to give me negative 1 times the cube root of 2, which is a little better because it's a positive quantity anyways, right? Times x. Now, we have to solve for x, right? So what are we supposed to do? Well, I think we should get all the x terms on the same side so we can isolate x, right? So let's go ahead and add this term, which is like a negative term here. So let's go ahead and add that to both sides, which is going to end up on the left-hand side here. And then subtract 1 from both sides, which is going to give you negative 1 on the right-hand side. Okay? We're almost done. Just hang in there. Make sure to watch the video till the end. Okay? Almost done. All right. So what am I going to do next? I am trying to solve for x. So what I need to do here is take out the x. And then it's going to give me 1 plus the cube root of 2 as a quantity equals negative 1. And finally, I'm going to divide both sides by this quantity. And I'm going to be getting the answer. Okay? Well, I just choose to write the radical first. It doesn't really matter. You can write it either way. But the solution to this equation by way of cube rooting is going to be this one. What happened to the other roots? You might be asking, right? Like, what happened? Okay. This is a cubic equation. It's supposed to have three roots, right? Well, the other roots are for you to find out, right? I mean, you can uh, think about it, like how to solve this. Once you know one of the solutions, finding the other solution should not be too hard, right? Because you can just go ahead and divide this polynomial, cubic polynomial, by a linear polynomial, and then you'll get the answer. Or you can use vieta or other means. Okay. But anyways you're able to find the other solution. This would be an interesting question to ask, though. Are the other solutions real or complex? I just want you to think about it and come up with an answer. And please let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching. Please comment, like, and subscribe. And see you in the next video. Bye-bye.